passive and active transport. One of the most important elements of a cell is a cell membrane or plasma membrane. What is the role of plasma membrane? How does the transport across plasma membrane work? What are the ways in which transportation takes place? What is the difference between active and passive transport? The plasma membrane acts as a semi-permeable barrier between the cell and the extracellular environment. This permeability must be highly selective to ensure that the molecules such as glucose, amino acids and lipids can easily enter the cell. The permeability must also ensure that the essential molecules and intermediates remain in the cell and that the waste compounds leave the cells. Thus, selective permeability of the plasma membrane allows the cell to maintain a constant internal environment or homeostasis. Transport across the membrane may be passive or active. It may occur via the phospholipids by a layer or by the help of specific integral membrane proteins called permesis or transport proteins. Passive transport is the type of diffusion in which an ion or a molecule crossing a membrane moves down its electrochemical or concentration gradient. In passive transport, no metabolic energy is consumed. It is of three main types. Osmosis, simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. The plasma membrane is permeable to water molecules. The to and fro movement of water molecules through the plasma membrane occurs due to differences in the concentration of the solutes on its either side. The process by which the water molecules pass through a membrane from a region of higher water concentration to the region of lower water concentration is called osmosis. The process in which the water molecules enter the cell is known as endosmosis while the reverse process which involves the exit of water molecules from the cell is known as exosmosis. In plant cells, due to excessive exosmosis, the cytoplasm along with the plasma membrane shrinks away from the cell wall. This process is known as plasmolysis. Due to endosmosis and exosmosis, the water molecules come in or go out of the cell and cause a pressure known as hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure that is caused by the osmosis is known as osmotic pressure. The plasma membrane maintains a balance between the osmotic pressure of the intracellular and intercellular fluids. In simple diffusion, transport across the membrane takes place unaided. Molecules of gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide and small molecules enter the cell by crossing the plasma membrane without the help of any permease. During simple diffusion, a small molecule in aqueous solution dissolves into the phospholipids bilayer, crosses it and then dissolves into aqueous solution on the opposite side. There is little specificity to this process. The relative rate of diffusion of the molecule across the phospholipids bilayer will be proportional to the concentration gradient across the membrane. Facilitated diffusion is a special type of passive transport in which ions or molecules cross the membrane rapidly because specific permeases in the membrane facilitate their crossing. This diffusion does not require the metabolic energy and it occurs only in the direction of the concentration gradient. Facilitated diffusion is characterized by the special features. Firstly, the rate of transport of the molecule across the membrane 
is far greater than would be expected from a simple diffusion. Secondly, this process is specific. Each facilitated diffusion protein or protein channel transports only a single species of ion or molecules. Lastly, there is maximum rate of transport. When the concentration gradient of molecules across the membrane is low, an increase in concentration gradient results in a corresponding increase in the rate of transport. Active transport is a movement of any substance through the cell membrane that requires energy and is always against the concentration gradient, that is, from low concentration to high concentration. In the process of active transport, the solute particles move against the chemical concentration or electrochemical gradient. Some membrane proteins act as carrier molecule and transport the substrate to the other side of the membrane. When the molecules or ions move through the plasma membrane from low concentration to high concentration, they require energy for such movement. This required energy is provided by adenosine triphosphate or ATP. ATP is produced by oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. The active transport of molecules occurs in nerve cells and kidney cells. During active transport, materials are transported against a concentration gradient. Active transport is very rapid and is usually unidirectional. It can be affected by cold, cyanide and absence of oxygen. A specific protein acts as a carrier for each molecule or ion of a substrate. At one side of the membrane, the carrier molecule bears its binding site. On binding with the substrate molecule, the carrier goes on conformational change. This helps in transporting the carrier-bound substrate to the other side of the membrane, where it is freed in an unchanged state. Thus, the substrate molecules travel across the membrane, leaving the carrier molecule in the membrane. This transportation needs energy, which is supplied by ATP. In the process of supplying energy, ATP is converted into ADP. There are sodium-potassium exchange pumps in the membrane of many cells. It works against pressure of gravity. This is a mechanism for transferring sodium and potassium against their electrical gradients. For this process, energy is utilized from ATP in the same way. The protein involved in the pump is sodium and potassium dependent ATPase. For each molecule of ATP used, three ions of sodium are pumped out and two potassium ions are pumped in. The cell, therefore, maintains higher sodium concentration outside it than within. Sodium and potassium exchange pumps follow certain functions. The pump maintains a positive potential on the outer side of the membrane and relatively electronegative potential on the inner side. It creates resting potential in the nerve cells. The pump maintains water balance in living cells and also helps in urine formation. It also takes part in the excretion of salt as in the case of marine animals. Seagulls, penguins and a few other marine animals drink sea water only to maintain the composition of their blood and cellular fluids because they eliminate excess salt to the secretions of nasal glands which causes a downfall in the concentration of salt in their body. The sodium pump present in the plasma membrane of their salt gland cells actively extrudes sodium or Na ions which is accompanied by the chloride or Cl ions. Their nasal secretion contains 1.5 to 3 times more NaCl concentration than the blood. So to compensate this loss, marine animals drink seawater. 
the unsecreted and unmetabolized excess sodium present in the extracellular fluid have a tendency to pass back into the cells. Other substances combine with sodium ions and pass inwardly along with them like glucose and amino acids in intestine. This phenomenon of combining of substances with sodium ions is called secondary active transport whereas sodium potassium exchange pump is called primary active transport. Apart from the sodium potassium pump mentioned before, the other important pumps are called calcium ATPase pump and proton pump. Thus, we can say that passive transport does not involve the expenditure of energy by the cells and it is a physical process while active transport involves an expenditure of energy by the cells and is highly selective. Passive transport always occurs along the concentration gradient and does not allow the accumulation of substances in the interior of cells whereas active transport usually occurs against the concentration gradient and helps in the accumulation of substances in the cell. In passive transport, carrier proteins are not involved as it takes place either through the matrix of permeases of the membrane. While in active transport, carrier proteins are required since matrix of permeases of the membrane are not involved. Passive transport is bidirectional and slow. On the other hand, active transport is usually unidirectional and rapid. Decrease in temperature decreases active transport but does not affect passive transport. In passive transport, there is no effect of oxygen content and metabolic inhibitors on it, while active transport is reduced or stopped with a decrease in oxygen content. Metabolic inhibitors also stop active transport.